time for the Film Crickets with Jay Fortier and Chris Marno. On this week's episode number 38, Jay, Chris, and their special guests, two times Emmy-nominated TV hosts from the PBS program The Arts Page and radio DJ at 96.5 WKLH, Milwaukee's hometown rock. Sandy Max review the 1993 American romantic crime film True Romance. Does it stand the test of time? Let's find out. Your film crickets are on now. All right. Hey, friends. My name is Jay Fortier. I'm along with my good friend, Steve Lavoy. Yeah. Uh, Steve is filling in for uh, Chris this week. He like, literally came in like the wind beneath my wings. <laughs> you know, like, Big shoes to it, fill. Like, Big shoes to fill. I'll my God, you. man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that I'm was nervous. awesome. Yeah. Uh, literally within uh, like the last three hours was given this movie and watched it like, you know, it's a two hour film. It's not even like, a, you know, like, hey, this is an hour and a half film. Uh, so he stepped up. I want to thank him. And uh, but we also have a guest here today uh, named Sandy Max. And uh, Steve did uh, speak a little bit about that at the beginning during the intro. But I want to cover some more stuff. We got uh, she is a broadcaster who worked in Chicago and Atlanta, and now a, a TV and radio personality in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, currently, and can be seen on Milwaukee PBS as the host of the Arts Page, can be heard on Afternoons with Craig Carson on 96.5 WKLH in Milwaukee, the hometown of, uh, I'm sorry, Milwaukee's hometown rock and um, nights on Rock 102 in Springfield, Massachusetts, plus the creator and host of the podcast Downtown Blabby for the Downtown Abbey fans. So I got to say, Sandy, not only am I welcoming you, but I would like to ask, how is it you have time to breathe? <laughs> uh, you know, objects in motion tend to stay in motion. So wow, just keep awesome. going with the momentum. And I can tell, Jay, that you're not a Downton Abbey fan because you just called it Downtown Abbey. <laughs> Oh, that's right. It's my I bad. find that yeah, very yeah. charming, and that's oh. quite all right. So, <laughs> Downton totally Blabby forget. is not your podcast. It's okay. It's not your cup <laughs> of tea, as they say in the in the English world. So, it's quite I all could, right. I, I'm sure I could listen to it, but I, I I might not know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's very. I am no. very charmed by that because it's so funny that it's such a worldwide phenomenon, Downton Abbey, and there are people who yeah. I've thought are going to be, be big fans and and just aren't a part of it at all, and then other people have surprised me. I thought they would never be into it, and and they are. So you're just proving that point. It's awesome. No problem. It just, well, it, it charmed me. My, my mother that loves me so, so much. If I ever was to call her during that show, she would actually tell me to call back, you know, like <laughs> nothing would, would keep her like, yeah, she, I'm, I'm watching a program right now. Can you call me back? Uh, so yeah. So a little familiar with it. Not much, but, well, that was, but uh, definitely I've heard of it. Yeah. That was when it was appointment viewing because it started in 2010 on PBS and it was every Sunday night, you know, it was before you could just mm -hmm. binge it. So, yeah. So that was, uh, that was a special time for <laughs> a lot of us Sunday nights on PBS. Uh, it's yeah, funny. Yeah, I absolutely. hadn't heard that, that may, name exactly how it was pronounced, but then boom, I totally forgot because it's, a, it's one of those, I can't say I don't like it. I've never seen it. So Your time will come. Uh, it's, it's yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just, It'll be one like just one day. I'll be like texting you, going, "Oh my god!" <laughs> There's a movie sequel and, 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 and I, coming out. Wow! And, and I will say uh, when I when I put together the intros, um, you know, I'm reading off like kind of a resume uh, of your guests. I do them all every week, and I had to cut some things out because Sandy's was so long. I'm like, and and if you listen to the intros, a little behind the scenes magic, I have to speed my voice up a little bit to get it all in for that song. And I'm sitting there going, wow, speed it up more, speed it up more, speed it up more. And I'm, I'm talking so fast now. And I'm like, blah, 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 blah. And, and it's, like, the it's like, I tried to get guy, in all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, really, really. So, so that's, uh, that's awesome. You, you're definitely involved in a lot of stuff. So, uh, no, that's great. That's awesome. So, so we are so thankful to have well, you. Well, thank you for inviting me. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> Chris and I, um, what we were doing prior to having guests, um, we were doing random. Uh, so we, we didn't want to be fanboys and, and steer the ship. We picked a couple of ones here and there, but it was very, it was, it was very rare um, because it, it made it a lot more interesting. So what we would do is randomly generate a number between um, uh, 1980 and 1999 and then uh, do a number, a random number that would be one in 50. So that would represent the number at the box office. So whatever year we got, 
and then whatever box office number we got, that's that's what movie we'd end up watching. So, but ever since we would have guests, we'd have them pick it, and therefore it's us also not steering the ship. So, uh, you ended up picking the movie True Romance, which was from 1993, and it has um, uh, Christian Slater and uh, Patricia Arquette. So what I'm going to do real quick is uh, do the quick um, plot summary from IMDb, and then we'll, we'll, we'll just get into it. How's that? Excellent. Sounds wonderful. All right. I look forward to this conversation. So, yeah. So um, <laughs> uh, IMDb says that in Detroit, a lonely pop culture geek marries a call girl, steals cocaine from her pimp, <laughs> and tries to sell it in Hollywood. <laughs> Meanwhile, the owners of the cocaine the mob track them down in an attempt to reclaim it. So that's the, uh, the summary, I guess, you know, from IMDb. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it doesn't uh, mention Christian Elvis Sl at all. No, no. Yes. And it's I like will this, tell this... you <laughs> that was one of the main draws for me. Cause I saw this in 1993 when it came out, this actually has a couple wow. of ties to radio for me. It came out in 1993. I lived in Atlanta. It was my first job out of college and I worked at an oldies radio station. And as I recall, there were flashes of Elvis and his gold lame. And so that was what drew me in. I was like, Ooh, this sounds good. And sunglasses and Christian Slater. I was like, okay, I'm in. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie experience then. Uh, and then my mm -hmm. other radio tie to it is fast forward 20 years later, 2013, I got laid off from my Chicago radio job, as it happens in radio, you know, and mm -hmm. I was a bit uh, uh, devastated and took the bus home, got a big bag of potato chips, plopped on the couch with some light beers, <laughs> and this was my comfort movie. This was how nice. I licked my wounds, uh, and it was a wonderful mm -hmm. welcome back to this uh, intensely crazy roller coaster world so it, it has sentiment and i've watched it many times in between 1993 and 2013 and even since then so this was a treat to revisit that world for me but honestly elvis was the draw when uh when it first came out nice and then um also this is actually uh so steve has only seen this today for the first time and i saw this today <laughs> or, or, or this weekend um this would be my second time since 1993 so oh wow it's almost like a first viewing did you see it in the movies, Jay? No, I saw it on uh, the video tape. I guess you, you will <laughs> at the time, video cassette. Um, yeah, so that was a, I saw it once. I think back then it was great. I, I liked it back then. Um, it's just one of those. You, you, sometimes there's, there's movies that they they elude you after a while. Like it's like, oh yeah, I have to check that out again. Oh yeah, I have to. <laughs> and it's like finally I had the you know the reason you know to so um, so that is pretty so awesome. Steve we could make this the shortest podcast ever since you saw it fresh <laughs> as of an hour ago and does the movie yeah, hold up yeah. I, I am too i'm too yeah. emotionally attached to it <laughs> I, i'm gonna oh, i'm gonna tell you something my my eyes are still burning from watching it and uh you know I, here i am thinking well first off i look at it I go and i and i'm looking at the title true romance i'm like oh softcore porn on a sunday morning i can handle this <laughs> Nowhere near softcore porn. Uh, wow. You know, so well, which, I wasn't quite ready for what I saw. What Jay didn't and, read uh, in the synopsis, which they don't mention on IMDb, obviously, is this is pre-Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs. Mm -hmm. This is a film written by Quentin Tarantino. So that will clue right. you in if you haven't seen the movie why I'm guessing Steve's eyes are still... Um, a little cross-eyed yeah, and nutty, yeah, uh, I really... but I mean, yeah, I mean, this was a whole entry to the Tarantino world, and I am not a fan of supreme violence. You wouldn't know that based on this being one of my favorite films, but um, but this was, you know, no. this was <laughs> jarring. I think in 1993, hmm. and maybe yeah, to you this morning around. on a Sunday. Yeah, if you, if, 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 if you and I were sitting on like speed dating and I said, what's your favorite movie? And you said, true romance. I'd be like, all right, the first date, bulletproof vests, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I bring my own corkscrew. Yeah, because this is... It, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Do you have the Swiss Army knife on you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, how would you like to be a guy named Roger Avery? Because he got zero credit for writing this because he was apparently the co-writer. 
I don't know uh, this part of the story. Yeah, it says uh, Roger Avery uncredited, um, as as in the two uh, people who um, wrote it. I mean, according to IMDb, it's like, man, like you can't even give me a, like a little bit of a throw me a bone or something. <laughs> you know, like why why just Quentin? You know, like but uh, so I don't know the whole story on that, but I just see that some it says it right there, and it's like two of them, two results for the order for the writing credits, but like only. Quentin was on the uh, on the movie, so because see, I'm it's a like big that, credit that must... watcher, so yeah. that's funny that you say that because what I noticed in credit watching at the beginning of the film, did you have a notice like one of the producers is Steve Perry, and I'm like, it can't possibly be the yeah, same guy yeah, from yeah. Journey, I can it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I thought the same thing. I had to wonder. I said, yeah, is oh Sherry like the main <laughs> character here <laughs> yeah. or something? No, yeah, I. I, I so uh yeah yeah it's not the same thing and i'm like nah i can't be can't be yeah so um, it, but you know it's it's weird too is uh watching this now it's probably unfair like than watching it back when it came out obviously i saw the name harvey weinstein and went "Ooh, i know that name you know i don't know many names but i knew that one and i wouldn't even have thought of that in 1993 no, nobody, when well, it came out nobody, so but... so it's weird watching it we're watching it after yeah yeah Oh no! It's it's it doesn't matter even if it if this even if this is your first viewing, uh, you I see it and I go oof, <laughs> like you know what I mean? That name just yeah, you know yeah. it, it sparks that reaction from everybody now. Like I just, did notice that too. He was oof. one of three uh, executive producers at least. It, it wasn't just a, a Harvey Weinstein. No, I mean, like, but listen, it did I mean, but it did leave a mark. Yeah, yeah, but we can't. Nobody can. I would say, I don't think we sh we should ever not pay attention to those films i mean like it's like that because that would be taking away from everyone else that did anything in that you know what i mean like all the efforts that was made by the innocent um it's not their fault the guy's a, a piece of garbage so you know what i mean like i you, i would say still enjoy it he's just a monster you know but like it has nothing to do with the film the film's great i would say i i uh i do agree i yeah. do agree yeah so it's just it's, still you know what I mean? it's jarring like to see it in print <laughs> You know what I mean? It's not like he's the star. You know what I mean? It's not like the Cosby show. You know what I mean? You watch that and you're like, whoa, absolutely. Even if, uh, even if Quentin did not write this, I would have said, my God, he's all over this. Like, you know what I mean? This is so inspired by, in fact, is he writing under a, a different name? Because like, even though this was his beginning, all the stuff that, uh, how about the, you know, you see the martial arts triple feature that, uh, He's going to see made up people. You know what I mean? Like people you don't even know. It's like, well, you know, that's him. That's his style to like put up this uh, fake brand and like, you know, like in, in Pulp Fiction or whatever, he comes up with the the red apple cigarettes or whatever. It's it's definitely his style. And by the way, I think he's like, he's like the type of person that is sort of frozen in another time. That would yeah. you agree? Like uh, he's always all his music in, in other films are like this older stuff. You're, you're in Pulp Fiction, you're listening to Flowers on the Wall, it, like all, all these older songs that are sort of morphed into the, the movie. Well, the same with this. You, I, I mean, he's driving a pink Cadillac, <laughs> Cadillac right? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. He, he's obsessed with Elvis. I mean, everything's like old. So it's it's definitely very, very Quentin. You know what I mean? So even though he didn't direct very it. Very California. Uh, Scott, yeah. No, he's very, definitely very um, California. Yeah. Uh, now, are you not a fan of his work otherwise? Like, or, or do you like it? Uh... It is intense for me. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't need to see Pulp Fiction again. Right. Uh, I saw Reservoir Dogs back. In the back when it came out on VHS with a friend of mine who I was hanging out with, and he's like, "You really need to see this movie. You really need to see this movie." And I was like, "Okay, it's probably too violent for me, but if we're going to watch it together, it's okay. We'll have fun." And we watched the first five minutes, and I said, "Oh, so this is the guy who who did it?" And he's like, "You told me you hadn't seen this." And I was like, "I haven't." And so basically, it was a spoiler alert. Like I figured out who. Wow, Mr. Pink wow. was, or Mr. White, or Mr. Whatever. So <laughs> it wasn't as uh, suspenseful for me, but uh, mm. but I enjoyed that film because, if anything, Quentin Tarantino movies have excellent casts. So mm. I, as much as gruesome as Inglorious Bastards was, I did enjoy that movie because the acting is great and the story. You know, his 
his stories take you on a complete journey. And I did like Once Upon mm. a Time in Hollywood, even though it's so long. Until I didn't you see get that to the yet. super violent, well, sorry, then I won't tell you, but there, there's okay. a super violent part where I'm like, okay, really? Um, but he wow. creates Spoiler. this entire world. Like, no, 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 no. It's, 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 no, it's no, a I'm joking. Tarantino like, movie. I would say it's a Tarantino movie. <laughs> no, there's yeah, extreme yeah. violence. It, there's zero spoiler with it. If you say it's a, oh, it's violent. Well, no. Yeah. <laughs> you um, know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, it'll be one, but there'll be one of those times where um, I live with my boyfriend and, and I'll be in another room working on something and all I will hear is gunfire and the most vile language you can think of. Hmm. And I'll be like, what are you watching? And he's like, oh, Django Unchained is on in the background. Hmm. I'm like, that is not a background movie. That is so... <laughs> upsetting because as we get to you know whether this movie holds up today I, there's a particular scene where it is it wasn't comfortable to watch in 1993 but now it is particularly uncomfortable to watch because of the language used and what's being kind of said all the way around in that christopher walken and dennis hopper scene i'm like hmm. this is you know you know, that, uh, like, does I'm, that hold up today, or in comparison to all of the other Tarantino films, is it does well, it roll yeah, off that, like would, duck, well, water off a duck's back? I don't, I, I don't know. Well, no, I, I would definitely. I, I say we, we we can talk about that absolutely. Um, I mean, like it's we can still have a, a total overall opinion at the end. Um, you know, during the final judgment section, but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, yes, yeah, what we call it uh, the. I would say that for some reason with him, it's like he's a fan of using the N word throughout. Like, I, I, you know, I mean, it's not just there. It's in, uh, I mean, he's actually using the word himself in uh, Pulp Fiction. I mean, when, when he's talking about the guy who gets his head shot uh, mm -hmm. in the car. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's Which many I did laugh out loud started... at that part. I confess. Oh, oh when, when, he, when he got shot, that was hysterical. <laughs> yes, because the, 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 the what makes it funny is the banter between uh, John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson, like trying to figure out how the hell are we going to get off the street <laughs> when there's blood and brains right. splattered all over the thing without getting pulled over. So, yes, it's designed that way and perfectly yeah, executed. It works. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This um, was similar, too, by the way. I mean, this was kind of like some moments were funny and then followed right by a very violent moment. So it was oh, yeah. your emotions were all over yeah. the place. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This was almost like probably the, the trial run to Pulp Fiction. Obviously, I think he I mean, it's close, but, but I think maybe Pulp Fiction is a little bit worse than this one. Uh, so so he kind of raised the bar a little bit when he did Pulp Fiction, I would say. Oh, I yeah. Agree. It was all like cranked up to 11. Yeah, he just, directed just, it, Pulp Fiction, right? Yes, yes. Tar Tarantino? Yeah, he didn't direct yeah. this one, but boy, it's, he, he was all over this anyway. Like, he might as yeah. well have directed it. You know what I mean? It it, just, it was his stamp. It was everywhere. Um, yeah, no, he definitely, uh, I think Pulp Fiction um, and, and uh, Reservoir Dogs were like his first uh, couple. And then the, uh, you know, he that was another there, reason but... I wanted to see it in 93, because I'm a big Blade Runner fan. I like Ridley Scott's work. So I was like, well, how bad can it be if it's Ridley Scott's brother? Oh, directed? God, another you know? one. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no another like, Blade Runner. Might... No, it's funny because, you know, obviously they, they did the show Blade Runner and they didn't like it too much. But some of the people <laughs> that, that have watched the show or been on the show said, let's talk. Let's go back to Blade Runner. We got to talk about Blade Runner again. Obviously, you guys didn't see it the right way or whatever. So it's kind of funny you say that. <laughs> that. That show's been brought up a lot. Yeah. Well, we knew. Uh, it's funny. Well, it, Chris and I both didn't really like it that much, like I, because it was just so broody and moody and like, like kind of like. Oh, but okay. uh, you know, and it's the pacing and the whole narrative. But we also knew that it was well beloved, so we were like, okay, we get it. We it, we even said it held up. Like it, we were saying. It holds up for the people that are the right people that are going to enjoy <laughs> this. It's just not us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I we am tried one our of those people. To be respectful. Yeah. You know what Good. I mean? Like we, we knew. Yeah. We weren't trying to trash it. It was just more like, like we got to the point of like, I don't know, man, two hours of this. <laughs> like, like Chris would, Chris is in the sense of like saying he wants to rewatch it maybe with someone who's educated on the thing. I said, I think I'll pass. <laughs> 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 but yes um if you if you listen to that you'll you, you might get a kick out of that one and um That's if funny. you also want to listen to um 
listen to our episode for Repo Man with Mike Shu, this uh, uh, DJ that's in this area. Um, he he was like, "Yeah, you guys trashed on Blade Runner, man. What the heck?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we knew we were on a, a, a possible island on that but yeah so yeah but that's so, a beautiful um, thing about film you know it's like it can be to your taste and and if it wasn't a world that you enjoyed being in mm -hmm. it's okay you never have to re-enter that world again whereas i will revisit yeah oh no absolutely i'll watch um, it enough times for you <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you can just tell me all about it cliff notes uh so um yeah but it's funny we have at the end we have the segment called final judgment which we jokingly mm -hmm. named because th there's nothing final about it like i mean it's just we're, it's an opinion there's nothing that's etched in stone it's it's just a it's just the angle that's why we jokingly called it that but um so yeah by the way elvis in this movie is like sort of like the conscience of uh christian slater's oh, character clarence yeah uh, yeah uh clarence thank you uh um, skinny elvis though not not like late 70s bad elvis. <laughs> uh, it was skinny like hot this. gold lame elvis. elvis come on yeah. now yeah all right yeah be yeah. decked <laughs> and, with the glasses and i had and... to i had to look it up and uh because I, I didn't recognize his voice but it was val kilmer he's listed in the trailer but yeah. i figure i mean you know when you're watching the film you're like oh yeah else in here somewhere but, but then, you never really see no him. you you don't really see his face you kind of just see a side view you see his arm you see the glasses but you don't really get a good look at, at his face mm. yeah he's in the reflection sometimes towards yeah. the end but, but um, not like but ultra I, yeah. clear either but i i liked that treatment and mm. as i understand uh val kilmer really wanted the role that christian slater got and oh wow the just casting didn't turn out that way but uh you know Val Kilmer think about it he uh well he was in Top Gun that also uh Tony Scott directed um but he had already played Jim Morrison of the Doors oh, so now right, he's played right, right, right. Elvis as well so uh but I I think that's a fun cool. way to show Clarence processing and justifying things and getting his machismo up in the can that's what i find it also entertaining that's the only place yeah. he confers with elvis not in the car right not in his not in the comic book store nope only in the can yeah right right uh, i can't wait till val kilmer plays uh janice joplin that should be <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um it's funny because it's know, true <laughs> right <laughs> He's the go-to of any musician. Doesn't matter who. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, it, I got to say, it's too bad. Um, like, I think only in the last, like, five or so, maybe uh, more years, you finally got to hear from Christian Slater again. Like, uh, it had been, like, this really long gap where you don't, uh, he just disappeared. I don't know. I think he got, he became, like, that party guy. Like, you know, it, it was, like, maybe a little too um, into drugs or drinking or whatever he was he was into some stuff so i think that might have uh, been part of why he disappeared but um i think up until the, there was this uh tv show um on usa network called uh, mr robot which he was on yeah and by the way if you want darkness there you go that's your show <laughs> No, no, I'm just a bit. Yeah, but you, you, yeah, you go, you go to that. Yes, because I watched like one season of it, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know if I can take another season of this. <laughs> like, it's just too grim. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those moments, that, like throughout the whole season, where you're going, um, there's not enough victories here. Like, I mean, like you're like, ah, I feel really crappy. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, if you're gonna, you know, take stuff away, give give back a little. You know what I mean? As far as the story, but no, it's just like they just which, like, it. yeah, like you said before, with true romance, or at least you know we're having fun on a roller coaster, and then something dire happens, or you know, there there's there's enough comedy and lightheartedness and laughter in this to balance out some of the more intense scenes. Now I know throughout the years he's gotten compared to. Um, uh, Jack Nicholson because of his delivery and demeanor. Uh, but I think Christian you know, Slater. 
Yeah, because of the way he kind of has this, you know, like it's is his delivery. So, like, I feel bad though, like because I think he's actually better actor than not 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 better than Jack, but I'm saying that he's better. He's a better actor than people just saying, "Oh, he's just trying to be Jack." You know what I mean? Like, he actually pulls off a lot of good stuff in this. But that's an interesting that you say that because I was going to say he he kind of plays himself because he had played the dark character in Heather's before this which is, I think, kind of why he fit into this role so well. I love him in mm. this role, but you're right. Like, yeah. I didn't see him. I knew he was in Mr. Robot, but I didn't watch that show. I haven't watched it yet, yeah. but um, he was also, he played a role in a movie called The Wife with, is it Meryl Streep or Glenn Close? Glenn Close and Jonathan Price, where Jonathan Price plays this award-winning writer, but Christian Slater is in that movie and he's he's really good and he's a little mm -hmm. less squinty and yeah, 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 yeah. whatever that vocal yeah. quality is like he's a little <laughs> less himself but he's still not mm. completely not himself like he's still kind of a smarmy dirt ball which i'm so sorry mm. if he hears this i'm <laughs> sorry <laughs> you're great as clarence you're perfect as clarence yeah. but but he like, where there are other you sound like, like the Brad Affleck Pitt. talk yeah no, I'm sorry, yeah <laughs> but, but think about Brad Pitt, who I love in this. This is one of my very, very, very favorite roles of Brad Pitt's ever. And he's mm -hmm. a distinct look. He's a good looking guy. But as Floyd the stoner, he is, I, I won't call him unrecognizable, but you still enjoy him, even though he's slightly distractingly Brad Pitt. And then I, I really, here I am saying I don't like gruesome movies. Um, of the gruesome movies that I like, um, I like Seven a lot. And Brad Pitt is completely different in Seven than he is in True Romance or California or, you know, pick any of his other roles. Um, but has he, has he ever been the stoner? Like, I, I, I'm not, I, I, that was a role that I wasn't used to seeing Brad Pitt in. And like, I, but the best line of the whole movie is when, when he's sitting on the, <laughs> on the couch and, and he's hey, going to get the door. And he goes, I didn't hear it. The door, what? Someone's at the door? Um, you know, that was pretty funny. I, I was laughing pretty good on that. And uh, I thought you were going to say, well, be condescending to me. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good, too. No, that was a good line also. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was good. I, I had to look like three times like that. That is Brad Pitt, right? That, it, you know, so uh, it just uh, not a not a role I've, um, that you're used to seeing Brad in. It's pretty cool. And a role that he Another. wanted. He wanted that bit part. Wow. He, he was convinced that he had met that guy and, and could be that guy. No, he was like and... the Spicoli of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> With his honey bear bong. Yes. That yeah, that, that me really up. did it. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was of all things to make the bong out of. Yeah. The little honey bear bong was pretty good. <laughs> and, and here he has the mafia in front of him with their guns drawn and he wants to offer them funny. a hit from his little honey bear. That was, yeah, that was pretty funny. That, that, was, that was the funny parts of the movie. You know, it was, it was great. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, by the way, how, how amazing uh, was Gary Oldman? Yes. Oh, I mean, like... he, here's another chameleon. You know, he played mm. Sid Vicious. He played Winston Churchill in The Darkest Hour. I mean, he's, um, and this is another one. Um, I think the role was written differently as the pimp. And Gary Oldman convinced Tony Scott, like, I know it's written like this. But I just met this guy on the set of this other movie I'm doing. He's a white guy, but he's got a Jamaican accent and he's got the dreads. So like Gary Oldman had met, met someone just enough like this that he completely wanted to model that character after. But yeah, down to the one eye and everything. So yeah, he's wow. an intense. But those are the scenes also where, especially your first time, you don't know where that i don't know where that's going at all <laughs> and you know right. so and, and, and that's a heck of a journey to be in his lair especially when your first introduction to him i mean you know his his is he only in two scenes but they're two of the most intense scenes of the film right well i mean 
it's a two hour it's a two hour movie but there's so many times in the movie where you say oh this is it this is the ending right here this is it and and it goes on you know so it's like you know this can't be it because you look at it and especially me i rented it on tv and i can see the little line i'm like i have a lot of line left that i have to fill out here in this movie so this cannot be the final scene although every scene seems like the final scene it's pretty cool i'm right. so he relieved was, uh... you enjoyed it steve <laughs> seemingly <laughs> yeah no it's good yeah yeah uh yeah yeah it was it was a good movie um but it, it keeps you like it keeps you upright in the chair it's not one of those that you're gonna fall asleep on um it, it really is it's it's action-packed and uh and, and you're like what's gonna happen next so what's gonna happen now who's that guy or you know uh, who are these guys and, and it's um it's pretty cool the beginning of the movie is uh it's a little weird obviously i think takes place in the present and then they go back is that is that what i'm led to believe like when he's in the bar with her um that, that's is that the older couple or what i, I didn't really understand that one a hundred percent in the he's, first scene that's his birthday night that's clarence's birthday night so i think he was trying to pick up an older hooker and didn't and so that wasn't her in he, the future okay no, correct no. correct that was uh yeah that's what i thought it was that. i thought yeah. that was her yeah, I thought that was her in the future, and then they went back in the past and where how they got there. So, okay, because I'm like, well, it, you know what? Listen, if Marilyn Monroe and Cindy Lauper had a love child, <laughs> it would have been this girl, the hooker in the bar. You know, that's who, uh, <laughs> you know, that's what she looked like. I'm like, who's that? And then doesn't so, she uh, kind yeah. of right, so that makes away? Sense. Like, doesn't she kind of limp away? Like, <laughs> yes, I don't know, yes, like, you're not sure if she's drunk asleep? or she can't yeah. walk. Yes, yes. But no matter yes, what, she, she doesn't she want to be with him. Stool. Yeah, like, like, yeah, as soon yeah, as he brings yeah. up the martial arts, she's like, and I'm out. She just taps yeah, out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's how much of a loser you know. he is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, but, but where does that, but, uh, but how does that, so now, now when you know the ending, where does that even fall? Like, like, is, 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 is that you to believe their relationship is over? I, is, 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 is this like the, the Forrest Gump where he's talking about his past to people on the park bench? Like, like where, where does that fall? It's a weird, it's a weird opening. That, that was the only thing that really didn't oh, make no. sense to me at all. Was, was oh yeah, no, it was just, uh, it was prior to him actually going to see the film, the, 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 the triple film there, like, you know, the three movies. Um, so that was earlier in the night. He tried to hook up with this one girl at the bar. Then he went to go see the movie and the, uh, the oh, okay. lead, leading lady shows that, up and the rest is all. That's when, uh, his, nothing... that's when his boss's hooker gift arrives. Right. <laughs> he was oh, he, didn't, okay, okay. he didn't know he was getting a hooker gift so he was trying right. to uh well who does he's right? trying to score I mean, earlier yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so i think that's yeah, the last that's... time your boss gave you one you were surprised right yeah. i mean he said you're gonna get a raise he didn't say how yeah. you know oh very nice <laughs> so yeah i think that's to establish just how much of a perceived uh not man about town clarence is that he really is a nerd who is living a solitary life. So, and also helps explain why and make it a more believable that he would fall head over heels after one hot night with a very cute blonde and go, hey, I'm only getting older. I've, we have such a strong connection. Will you marry me? Because hmm. all of that is, there are a whole lot of parts in here where like regular Sandy would be like, this is a deal breaker. But for some reason I just strap in and I go for this whole ride because oh, yeah. like that happens fast. Um, the whole Christopher Walken, Dennis Hopper conversation is unsettling to me. It's like, oh no, you know, like in its intensity, because I also didn't know where that was going, even though I know we're dealing with organized crime, it was still like, well, maybe, maybe this is going to end differently, you know? Um, but that language is, is rough for but, me. I mean, so. does he, yeah does he score points when he goes back to uh your your evil past if you will and he and he tries to settle up you know he tries to say hey, well, i'm gonna free you from this evil past and take care of your your pimp and all these people does he kind of score points in the movie for you to go hey this guy's not too bad sure you know who who doesn't <laughs> want to be pretty that's the way that's how he proves his love you know i mean that's it, and for some reason, after he talks to Elvis in the bathroom, you know, you believe <laughs> like, like all of that. I mean, it sounds ridiculous as we talk about, it, you know, but but it's masterfully done like that. That pep talk from Elvis does help you 
believe that he would be that fearless in front of Drexel to hand him an empty envelope and think he's going to get his bag and go. You know, it's just like, that because that's... Right, right. Considering he's, you know, the not man about town with the elderly hooker. I can't believe I just said elderly. With the... <laughs> <laughs> with the past her prime hooker you know but so really? i it, it is so much fun to go on this fun yeah. journey like that that was believable and i was engrossed in in all of that painful journey though everyone's getting very I mean, very geez. painful oh, oh. When, she, when james gandolfini's throwing her all around the uh, hotel room that's awful uh that's and, I, I like mean, yeah i, I still watch with one eye that's mm. that's hard that's, I mean, I know how it ends and, in, but it's, and again, right, that's right. also, does that, does that hold up? You know, now we're watching this film after hashtag me too. And after the summer of a whole lot of social justice awakening during the pandemic last year. So that's where, you know, in watching this, it does make me wonder, would I suggest this movie mm. to someone? But then I wonder if I'm just out of, pers out of touch because now we're in the world of Tarantino's and, superhero films where all sorts of cartoon violence happens and so I, I, can you guys tell me am i am i out of touch am i hypersensitive or is this a film that no. should be like Ugh, this was 1993 I, I don't know well i guess i guess you know here's a question now you're 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 a radio dj do you work at a station that still plays leonard skinner yes good point and Leonard Skinner, um, back in the day, had album covers with the Confederate flag and things like that, and 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 a lot of their T-shirts had that. Um, I think harder to find now, but but you know, do you feel bad saying, "Hey, here's a Leonard Skinner song"? Do you you know? Again, it's one of those things. I, I get times have changed, but is the group really that bad of a group? I don't think so. Is the message in your songs anything about that? Not really. Um, so, but yeah, I think it's one of those things. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I will tell you something else when we were joking around about music and that sort of thing. One of the reasons I love this movie so much is the music and that Hans Zimmer song, You're So Cool, every time they use it and it's to set up, the, you know, it, it's your cue that this is the loving part, that song gets me every single time. And I couldn't find it for a while because it was 1993 and I didn't have the soundtrack. But but once I found out what it is, I love that song. Now, is it, does that have a, uh, is lyrics on that or just an instrumental? Just an instrumental. It's just an mm. instrumental. So when you hear it at the beginning and it's the little xylophone sound and um, I love it so much. I went to see Hans Zimmer a couple of summers ago uh, perform wow. a whole bunch of movie scores, but I was like, I'm not going unless he plays that song. Cause you realize how mad okay. I would be. I would be the person like standing as everybody's leaving shouting, you're so cool. Yeah. Or bring the sign. Yeah. The, you're so cool sign, except you're not, if you don't play it, but yeah, I mean, right, does right, that, right. so I'm fascinated because I am it too. Right, right, exactly. Goes, You're not you. so cool. But my, no, no, he just goes, I, thank you very much, yeah. <laughs> he yeah, doesn't remember but, that he actually wrote a song called You're So Cool. <laughs> no, but he does include it. It's, it's magical. It's magical <laughs> to hear live. But being wow. in radio and being such a music fan, I realize I am so turned on auditorily. Does that music do anything for you guys? I'm so focused maybe hyperly on what's going on that I might not pick up on it. It depends. It depends on sometimes a certain film will, it'll just be like invasive where I'm like, wow, holy cow. That was amazing. Um, <laughs> like it, where it really, really grabs me, but that doesn't mean I don't think it, uh, it's great. I, I would, I would probably have to watch it again or hear, or just, you know, hear the song and then go, Oh, all right. Yeah. I remember now. Like it's one, it's, it's not sticking out in my head right now, but that also doesn't, that, that could have been me also being like I said, really crazily focused on all the details I wanted to remember for today. <laughs> like, sure. Sure. Steve, does it do anything for you? Um, yeah. So I liked it. It was funny though. Cause I, I always, uh, I'm more into music than I am movies. And I was looking on Amazon where they're selling the soundtrack and I'm just reading people's comments. I love to see what other people say about stuff. And there was some that actually wrote in that, that they didn't think the, the music quite met the movie. And uh, which was which was kind I'm of interesting. I'm surprised by that. They, they didn't think that it was like it didn't. Yeah, yeah. Like if you listen to the soundtrack, you wouldn't think that's what the movie was about. 
you know, yeah, they didn't, they didn't, qu- they, they liked the soundtrack, but, it, but they didn't think it really went well with the movie. So, so it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, I disagree. Yeah, I, mean, I, I disagree I like wholeheartedly. I like the music and obviously. <laughs> I am yeah, offended. My yeah. senses are offended. Wow. Yeah. That is so surprising <laughs> to me. Thank you for sharing that. That's just so surprising to me. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm just, that's yeah. how, that's yeah, it was, how it was interesting. I am. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I guess for me, it was like, I'd have to listen to it a little more and, and, uh, and hear the songs out there. It wasn't like a soundtrack where you're taking, I mean, it had outshine by Soundgarden and some others, uh, but it wasn't like a, a movie soundtrack that was well-known where they're taking a lot of well-known songs and putting it and you almost get like a greatest hits, like Forrest Gump. You're really getting a greatest hits of, of, of music when you get Forrest Gump. Um, there was a lot of unknown songs just from the movie. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, Hans Zimmer has done so much. So, I mean, he, he's, a, he's really good at, at soundtracks. So, I mean, they really, if, even if you've never seen the movie and you just run down the, the, the uh, cast, you're just going, wow, what an all-star lineup, especially maybe now, maybe not in 1993, mm-hmm. but now when you look at the cast, you go, wow, that person, this person. I mean, even the uh, the uh, the the housekeeper on Two and a Half Men had a role oh, yeah. in as this the movie agent. Uh, yeah. As, yeah. as the yeah. uh, scout yeah. talent. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I, we, I know that voice. And I'm looking at her and I'm like, oh, that's who that is. So, so you know, it's actually cool to watch it uh, uh, 20 something you know, years later, you know who probably, <laughs> because then now, you know, where yeah, they've been you know in your who career probably was a pretty interesting big name in 1993. And who is great in this is Bronson Pinchot. Oh yeah. He, I mean, he yeah. is, yes. there's another one where if Christian Slater, yeah. we don't feel is that versatile Bronson Pinchot is, I mean, he is so great as a, oh, absolutely. Uh, I was Yes. Yes. I, I, I really wanted him to do the, uh, the, the, uh, the special dance that he does. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, what's Balky Baltagamus doing on this show? Cause I don't even know what the hell his real name is. He'll always be Balky Baltagamus mm-hmm. to me, you know? Um, but yes, I'm like, what's the die die song? Come on. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I never knew Balky's last name. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it was, well, after. I know this, this guy's got some, skills yeah, I, I have to that. say it very fast. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't know much, but if you have a weird last name like that, it was like, yeah, that was better than homework back in the day, you know? Was, well, we did yeah. a movie, Another 48 Hours, and he brought up uh, the TV show Chips and said uh, yeah. the name of the auto mechanic that was on Chips saying, Harlan had to go and uh, grab build a bike for Ponch. I'm like, Harlan? <laughs> 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 so yeah he's got some skills when it comes to the, like the old tv shows and stuff that's yeah that's funny it's so funny yeah that was a great show and, and i looked it up so I, I i always like to look at stuff like all right was this was this before perfect strangers or after and this was actually after perfect strangers and and balky comes out a little bit when he's talking you're like ah oh, there it is there it is it was funny because uh back in the day so um where i live uh, the actor that played Big Bird on Sesame Street uh, had a house around around where I live, and I got to meet him once in public, and I didn't know it was him. I knew he, he lived in the area, and he came in obviously with, with not with the mask on <laughs> or with the costume on, but uh, he was wearing a, a leather jacket with an embroidered Big Bird on on the jacket. So I said, oh, this has got to be him. He's like in his 60s. There's no way this guy's that big of a fan. Uh, and I'm talking to him. I'm like, I... I Kind of like, you know, one of those, Psst, are you, are you Big Bird? <laughs> you know, like, uh, and, uh, and if he wasn't, I would have been like, oh, he's probably thinking what kind of weird guy is this? Uh, uh, but, but yeah, so he's like, yeah. So we was talking and he doesn't really sound like a uh, Big Bird, except he went into character. He was talking about something and he just, I said, Hey, what about that dog that was on the show? What, I forget his name. He goes, Oh, snappy. And it came out and I'm like, here's this guy, you know, looks like Colonel Sanders and, and, uh, and, and, and big birds of voice just came out of his mouth. And, and it was like, now I watched that since I was a little kid. Right. I mean, I'm like, wow, I've never seen what really big bird looks like. Um, so it was pretty weird, but yeah. So Balky, did come out in one of those scenes. It was kind of funny. I'm like, oh, there he is. There's Balky Baltimos. <laughs> but it is fun now that we know where Car- Tarantino's career went and has gone, I should say. It's not over, mm-hmm. God knows. Um, but now go through the checklist of you saw Samuel L. Jackson, you saw Tom Sizemore, you saw Christopher Walken, you know, you, so many of the cast members that 
Tarantino chose to use again in the future Brad Pitt. So it's kind of fun to see the be the beginnings of of the Tarantino creations. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't use um, Gary Oldman anymore. If he has, I'm, I'm not uh, aware. Yeah, I don't because, know. Because like after that performance, I mean, I'd be like, all right, come on. <laughs> You're going to be in my next movie too. Yeah. Because that was amazing. And I dig Saul uh, Rubinek, who... Oh, yes, yes. I mean, uh, he's uh, great. Totally, oh, another one of those underrated people that you just, uh, you know, not yeah, everybody knows actors. his name. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he is one of those... I mean, Adam... Uh -oh. Adam Sandler, uh, Adam, Adam Sandler tends to do that, right? I mean, Adam Sandler tends to grab a cast and move on to every film with this same kind he of. He does lineup. use his friends. Um, he uses his friends it, a lot. It, it seemed like Tarantino hmm. tried to do that. Yeah, so so I don't know if these are friends of Tarantino or if they became too big after this movie or it's weird because uh, yeah, Sandler pretty much you watch any of his films, it's like you already know who's going to be in it for the most part. Um, so it seems like this was kind of happening a little bit at end the series with uh, Pulp fi Fiction. Obviously, Samuel L. Jackson Briefly. is is in this for one a minute. As well, yeah, I was just saying for a very hot minute. Similar character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah they're, they're, after this one, well, I yeah. Mean, um, after this, they probably said, uh, uh, "You know, I, I promise you, you'll be in longer in, in the next uh, <laughs> in the next movie." Because wow, he I couldn't believe that happened, man. He, he <laughs> shot him and the other guy right away. I was like, "Whoa, gone!" Um, and you'll get just as colorful language in the future. Yeah, no kidding. Wow. They, <laughs> yeah, I don't worry. I, I, I got some reserve for you. Yeah. I got some. <laughs> yeah, you thought that was good. It's only going to get better yeah. from there. Don't worry. Right. So I think I think the film, though, if you look at the, the title of True Romance, what we see in this film is many segments of um, a test to see how uh, how into it you are in your relationship or how uh, how you will stand by your, your partner. So I think we saw that when he took on her, her yeah. pimp. I think we saw that when she would not give him up or, or the drugs yeah. and she is really getting a beat down. I mean, how many people would have <laughs> said, yeah, he's down the block at the cheeseburger place. Go, go. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, so we, we keep seeing these little segments that they are going to stick with each other no matter what. And I think that's where obviously the true romance title comes in because i'm trying to play it out going okay a title has to mean something to the movie right and and i'm i, I was weird i was just weird to me like where are we finding that here and, and and that was the only thing that made sense to me was the little the little test because everyone else there was no i mean they failed them so you know balky <laughs> Baltagamus, um elliot uh he 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 kind of failed the test he he didn't care he lied it's like he put the wire on no big deal um but but it was like the two of them uh, they and he, and even in his father, that's his what I was going to say. That's did, didn't that's give love. him up either. So yeah. so that was mm -hmm. that true romance. That's, on, that's, on a, the that's dad a point side. I was going to make. Is yeah, that his his dad even after their strained relationship and and just showing up and and obviously he was a seasoned cop and knew how that was going. So he still could have just made it easier on himself and he didn't give it up either. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, I I think that you know that was in in definitely in the movie in different parts of of the true love uh, either be a, a family member or the, or what they had for each other. So um, no, it was, it was pretty, pretty cool when you, when, when, if you can take everything away from the film, the shooting and the, and the drugs and all of that, and just look down to what the base is in the movie. You know, and it makes uh, that opening cool. scene. I was just going to make that opening scene. He, he did not find true love. He, you know, in the beginning, he didn't even find a connection, but you know, it's, there's your journey of he struck out big time, and all the way at the end, happiness on the beach with one eye and a beautiful now, girl and, and, and a son so named Elvis. I, I would say that I, before we get to the final judgment, I, we got to at least talk somewhat about the final sin, scenes. Now, you're a um, a set of cops that have a guy that's uh, wearing a wire, and you're about to bust a drug. A, a, a drug raid. Okay, you're gonna go in for a drug bust. There's this new invention. It's called a bulletproof vest. <laughs> Nobody wore one. Everyone well, was getting it's shot in the chest. It, uh, it's ninety three. Uh, people wore them back then. You know, this wasn't you see, like no. It wasn't like well, yeah, you know what? <laughs> maybe maybe the last I think, no, no. But I think I think L A. Yeah, I think L A. Would have yeah. Oh, they were I think Alabama. Chris Penn was wearing Chris Penn was wearing one because he's the last one who gets it from Alabama. 
and he was wearing one. But That's right, because she shot him was, in between. Yeah. Yeah, but it was it for it to be was a he? vest. I mean, it was more like a smock. You know, it was just. But like, I mean, they they all walked in, <laughs> and you you just saw red on every time they get shot. I was like, um, at least try. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, but you're going into well, that, you don't know. That's the colorful part of Quentin Tarantino's world. Yeah. I, I'm going to put on Chris's uh, cap right now and be Chris Uh-oh. for a minute. Uh, you know, and, and I, I love how Chris will pick apart a movie. First off, a Cadillac that's all wheel drive. Like every time he took off, all four wheels are spinning out. Like like that that wasn't even made like that. You know, even even Harlan couldn't put that car together. You know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> all four wheel drives. It's like it was just I'm looking at this going, OK, there's Hollywood. All right. Yeah. OK. Yeah. All four wheels are spinning out. This is great. An all wheel drive Cadillac convertible. I, I that, That's a great car. Must have been uh, everyone wanted that car back in the day. Uh, but but, you know, there was a few things like that. Yeah. You know, some of the things with the, uh, the the gunshots, I mean. I mean, what does he have? A sawed-off uh, rifle, shotgun in, in the in the motel room, and no one really hears anything going on. Like, how many times did she shoot this guy? Um, you know, it's just it, it's kind of funny. Or, or when they're escaping, like you say in that final scene, they just walk out. They're bleeding. <laughs> she, I mean, <laughs> yeah, she's just. Dumb. She looks like Little Red Riding Whore. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I mean, they, they don't stick out. I mean, I guess it's it's L.A., I guess. I don't know. But it's like they don't. And then they jump into a pink Cadillac convertible with Michigan plates. Like, <laughs> no one look at us. You look the other way and uh, don't mind us in our little briefcase full of uh, $200,000. And, uh, and every cop is just staring at the motel with their guns drawn. But they can make it out. You know, I mean, there was that would be my Chris's take on on some of the ridiculous uh, of the movie. Uh, <laughs> I, I I know Chris will watch this later. And go, yes, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so, the fairy tale but, happy ending. That's it's a romance. See, that's what you want the happy yeah. ending. Um, you, I don't know if you realize, and I don't like this at all. Spoiler alert: in Tarantino slash Avery's original script, I don't like this, and I don't find it believable. Uh, Clarence dies, and Alabama has been a conniving little red riding whore um, for the cash the whole time. <laughs> and I don't think, mm. I think that's disjointed because I, I watched it twice to get ready for this fun podcast. Um, but I watched mm-hmm. it like through that lens to watch her reactions through that lens. And I'm like, no, this is, I think she wants the love as much as Clarence does. Like, I, I believe their electric connection. And, you know, she's writing on the napkin. You're so cool. Like, I don't think that she was okay. You know, like, I I just don't find that believable. I think the happy ending that we get is more believable, even though Tony Scott got criticized for, you know, Frank capra the the end of this. I think it works. It's so funny you say that because you just brought me back to school where you'd have a book assignment and you'd watch the movie instead and the (laughs) book and the movie were not the same. So you'd write your book report and go, that didn't happen. Like, what do you mean it didn't happen? Oh, no, this is, you watched a movie, didn't you? And the teachers would, would, would definitely pick a book that had a movie and they knew what the movie was all about mm. and they would catch everyone for watching the movie. Yeah, that's what, the, that's what it just reminded me of. Like, <laughs> oh, the book is different than the movie, huh? <laughs> no, I swear the book I had was just like the movie. I, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I also, if you're, if you're going to pick a part, I don't think Dick Ritchie would have actually gotten the TJ Hooker part either. Because that, you know, just before they leave to go to the hotel room, he's like, I got the part. I'm like, how? How did you get the part? He was like doing his driving, like, like, Captain- that weird little like hand gesture. Well, I was like, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty bad. And would and and would and would Captain Kirk really call you and go, hey, I am looking forward to working with you. I mean, I, would he really? I, I mean. I don't know if they if the if the lead guy would ever call some of the B actors and go, "Hey, I, I can't wait to see you on set on Monday." That's great. Um, yeah, so that was kind of weird. <laughs> That's what set T.J. Hooker apart from everybody. They, uh, <laughs> right. He made all the well, personal you're... phone calls. <laughs> Adrian's med. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, uh, a little dated, obviously. If the mafia or government wants to find you nowadays. 
It doesn't have to be on like a ripped paper bag on the refrigerator. Um, they can they can definitely just <laughs> ping your cell phones. You know these little trackers that we have on us at all times. Uh, so so yeah, so kind of funny how they they can find you. It didn't even occur to me like the cell phone free world and that the only people who were on mobile phones were the Hollywood car phone. Wow, I didn't even. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, it, it, which back it, in the day it, was like so they couldn't trace you. It was um, it was really just a, a simple, almost like two way radio. So it didn't have any of the things that today's phones have. But you're right. It was it was it had to be in a car because if you had it on you, it, you would have like radiated your head because it was like <laughs> you know a hundred watts or something. Um, and it was huge, you know. So, uh, but yeah, you're right. The the back in the day, it was the limos and the sports cars. They were the only ones with the, with the mobile phones. So it was it was harder to trace people back then, where I think today would have been so simple as far as technology. Sure. And then they stop at the payphone and do other things in the payphone booth. But but it's it's just funny. Like when you grow up with that technology, it doesn't phase you. But if you showed somebody, we were talking, this came out in 1993. If you show somebody who's 20 years old, this film, that, that would just seem so old fashioned, you know, it would seem so nineties. Well, and it's just, you, it's like, Oh, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Yeah. If you were a young boy, if you were a young teenager right now and you said, Hey, the only way you can have sex is in a phone booth, <laughs> they'd be screwed literally because there are no phone booths. <laughs> so, you know, you'd, you'd be like, where do I find one of these? You know? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so uh, what do you say when we get to final judgment? Yeah. It's time now for final judgment are you ready to rubber stamp this bitch here's the final <laughs> judgment you might recognize the voice on that guy <laughs> he's a good guy huh yeah that guy is so it's good impressive. wow he's talented <laughs> authoritative <laughs> yeah yeah you get to you get to see the the actual. Uh, you get to actually see what I look like. Yeah, you know, usually I was just the uh, theater of the mind. The great and powerful Oz, <laughs> with a fabulous mustache. It, it really is. Yeah, yeah. Don't look behind this curtain. <laughs> <laughs> so, who would like to actually uh, go first? I will. I would like to pass, and I would like to suggest Steve go first again, All simply right. because yeah. you have seen it first with the freshest perspective. Yeah, you know, um, I'm going to be honest with you. It, it's it's a tough one. Uh, there's a Good. there's a lot of things that that nowadays watching it, like we talked about with technology, doesn't really hold up. Um, some of the things where, and again, I've never been to L.A., but you know, maybe some of those freaky things like would get past L.A. people and they wouldn't really even care. It's probably like just another day for them. So so maybe that holds up. Um, uh, you know, it's a uh, I think that uh, if you if you rip it apart and you say, "Hey, they're really just tests to see how much you love someone, to see what you would be willing to do for someone," well, I think that's always going to hold up, and, and no matter what it is, um, you know, you, you really want to see is that person going to stay faithful to me and true to me, and um, and I guess in in life uh, beyond everything else, whether it be material things or whatever what really matters at the end of the day is that person is your rock and that person is, 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 you know, solid for you, whether it be a family member or, or a, a spouse or a boyfriend, a girlfriend or something. So I think if, if you, if you break it down to that, then I would say it holds up and, uh, and, and everything else is obviously Hollywood and it's, and it's a movie. But I think if that's what the message was and that's what true romance is, then yeah, I think we're all looking for that, and we're always wondering what would that would that person you know take a bullet for me? You know, we always ask that question, and uh, so so maybe that's that, that would hold up the time. I would say yeah, it stands stands the test of time, in my opinion. Well said, man. Bravo! I would say very eloquent. I I love that. Yeah, that, Jay, that who goes great. first? Rock paper scissors. Oh, I'll go and, and what you can, uh, you know, this is, this is your baby, meaning like, you know, your, your favorite film. So like, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll let you, uh, end, end with it. All right. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, I think it absolutely does because I think by now, um, people are most likely not gonna, um, if you, if you're talking to a 20 something, um, and then say, Hey, you, you want to check this out? Um, chances are they've, uh, experienced some other 
uh, Quentin movies. I know he didn't direct it, but you know, like I said, he was all over this. You could absolutely see, you know, even though somebody else directed it, you know, a lot of the Quentin isms were there, you know, so even beforehand, uh, before, you know, he became famous. Um, so he's very, uh, a specific style that I think, I mean, chances are people have seen uh, other films like Django or um, maybe even Pulp Fiction. I don't know. Um, so I think, <clears throat> I think they're ready. Uh, people who would, uh, would be ready for this uh, type of uh, violence slash, um, even though like, yes, do does the set scene with um, Dennis Hopper and Christopher Walken um, is that, um terrible absolutely um it's i mean i wouldn't i would i don't know if it would be written with that today like meaning within the last year or so i don't know if that would be out i don't know it depends i guess i guess you know what um i think he's going to have a final film he, he's he's going to end soon I meaning like he's he has a certain number in his head uh, that he's he's put out there that he's going to end i think uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was like a second to last or something like that or something close like that. I could be wrong, but it's not not far off. He is going to have an at, like a last movie that he's going to do. You know, I didn't realize that he had. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize that he had set a, a limit like that. Yeah. Um, I, That's interesting. I, I don't have it in front of me, but yeah, um, we. I, what I'm saying is we'll find out if he's still going to be this way because it's he's not shy about about right. adding the n-word into his film so it's like which he's caught a lot of crap for it and, and rightfully so um but i would say still on a whole it holds up so like you know what i mean like, like yes those things you you can have things that you don't think will do well today but i think on uh, all together i think it holds up and i think that, so like you know one like i said people are fans of him their style the style that he brings and so it may not be for everyone but i think a lot of people would enjoy it. and um it, it was so well acted uh, from just from beginning to end all the people like they brought it it wasn't um yeah it wasn't like boy did he suck hey, everybody else was good no it was it was it was i think across the board um and we were uh so i absolutely think throughout all the people that were involved and the story and the, like I said, the style is, is very um, familiar. A lot of people like it. So I think it would absolutely do well uh, to most likely anyone that can handle the, uh, the violence or whatever, you know? So yeah, absolutely. Holds up. Two for two. Do we go three for three? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <Ooh>. Sure. We do. <laughs> I concur wholeheartedly for very similar reasons. Steve, I loved your profound universal approach to why it still holds up today. And then Jay, I like your more mechanical elements of why it still holds up. Um, that great perspectives on both of those that I, I think that I, I know that I agree with elements of those and have a couple to add because how else can Tarantino write a script that resonates with people if it doesn't have those universals of love and greed and adventure, you know, as part of it. So, but, but yeah, def definitely what would you do for love? And, and we all want true romance and sparks and adventure and excitement and joy. So I think it takes those boxes and sure some, some danger, you can be happy, but then you're complacent. Are you really happy? You know, you want excitement with that. So you definitely get that in this film. Um, and then Jay, to your point of, of mechanics and, and scripting, I think bottom line, and now this is becoming more of a nineties film, which makes me feel just, just, wow. I live in a, in the 21st century now, you know, it's just, it's interesting to realize, you know, it is a different time and it is a, almost a retro film. Now it'll 25th anniversary you know will be coming up at some point so it's just kind of fascinating if you look at it that way um or have we already passed the 25th anniversary we already did yeah i think so 2018 yeah, yeah. yeah so that's wow. just it, it's weird yeah it's weird to quantify that because it mm. i guess that's part of why i think it still holds up is even with pay phones and <laughs> the the time like i think because it leans into some of that vintage like it wasn't so 90s fashion because we lived in the pimp world and then we lived in the hollywood world like it wasn't such a time capsule movie 
it wasn't an, loaded with day glow like uh, yeah like, yeah or like boy the bands you know like, <laughs> right <laughs> you know right I mean? yeah like everything was like <laughs> like neon yeah. and pink Except yeah, you've got Cadillacs and 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 Elvis, you know. And so it's it just it, it Tarantino and and Tony Scott created this world again where you have some familiarity, uh, and it's kind of that you know they go to an amusement park like it is an amusement park type of film, where you're along for the ride and strap in because as much as you like you know when you go on a roller coaster and then it makes that quick jerk. And it's a thrill, but it's like, oh, I didn't know it was going to turn. And now I'm upside down. Right. And, and so it, it keeps you off balance just enough. And you laugh, even though you're scared crapless at one point because you <laughs> thought somebody was going to die or you thought you were going to die. And it's like, and then here you are laughing about either something grim or just people having a laugh about this guy flipped. He's, he'd flip his grandma and three other people down the street. We got it. You know, there's so many good jokes in here that are just natural conversation. You almost feel like you're hanging out with friends. And like, as crazy as this world is, you feel welcome. The elevator scene is crazy. You know, like there's just so, so much oh, action and fun. So I awesome. think this, yeah. yeah. So I, I definitely mm. think this film holds up. And I do think it holds up with a 21st century audience who for better or worse, has heard the N-word in songs and isn't upset by, you know, like it, that it has been used in a group way amongst other groups so that it isn't mean. It is used mean in this film and I'm uncomfortable with it, but I am an incredibly sensitive person and it's still not a deal breaker for me because I, it's part of this fabric and it's not, it's uncomfortable, hmm. but I don't think it's full on me. And there's some other, it, yeah. So, and, and there's another line in it that, that I'm really uncomfortable with. And I found out Patricia Arquette was uncomfortable with it too, when they're first getting together at the diner and he's getting, you know, they're going through the checklist of what do you like and what don't you like and what are your turnoffs? And I had to roll back. I'm like, did she just say Persians? And she did. And she I had to roll back too. Yep. And she said and, and I, it, but the What were you say? The the line the line was hard to hear it. Like it was a very she mumbles in the in in the film. So I was like, is it my surround sound that's set up wrong or something? So I, I'm like turning like the center channel up. I'm like, I can't hear what she's saying. Um but but yeah, I, I didn't know what yet. So I did. I do remember that that scene that you're talking about. And I I found out that she supposedly I didn't talk to her myself. I had, mm -hmm. I don't have Patricia Arquette on on, on speed dial yet. Um, but I I read in an interview that she had said that she was so uncomfortable with that line that on different takes she would just throw in other. She was like I was equal opportunity. She would just throw in any other ethnicity, so it wasn't always Persians. Mm -hmm. So I'm like okay. Oh wow. So, so those. But I don't think it goes so far as to be mean and oppressive. It's uncomfortable. It's but, not a like deal said, breaker for me. It's well, it's isolated, like I said. Meaning, it's one scene between two. Set, you know, I mean, kind of the conversation is between two people. If it mm -hmm. were throughout, where Christian Slater and Patricia Arquette were saying that throughout, then I think you're in a different story now that's the whole film and that's the main characters. This is two separate people that are like uh, on their own little uh, section of the film, which so yes, you could say that's bad, but it doesn't affect the rest of the film as far as being bad, in my opinion. I, you know what I mean? I think that, I think what's really uncomfortable is it's so obviously used as an insult. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, so, so there's no getting around that it's racist and ugly use of the word for as your last hurrah, I'm going to get you because you're about to kill me. Oh yeah. Here's the worst thing I can think of to say to you. That's uncomfortable, but I, and I hate to put a butt on that, but I, I think in context of this, and if you take this in context with the rest of Quentin Tarantino's work, this is a, this is a blip of the conversation and you can have much heartier conversations about other scripts and hopefully get to, to some better understanding. So I look forward to seeing Quentin Tarantino's you, next script. 
do you tend to um you know it's funny because like some of these movies and some songs do you tend to go wow this person watched this and liked it like wow what kind of person is this i mean do you do you tend to go wow i i can't believe or are you or you have a you go in some friend's house and you rip out an album and go they listen to this music oh my god i didn't know that um do you tend to do that i mean does that really like label you a little bit even though you're not that person but you like the movie is that you know, that's kind of, uh, I don't know. It's just one of those things. Like sometimes it shocks me when I see what people like and I'm like, wow, that is not what I thought. <laughs> and that's where I'm, that's where when does true romance hold up today? That's where I'm wondering, I think I could still recommend it to someone. Like, I, I you know, I, I don't think I would recommend it and say, but there's this one scene, like, I don't think I would say that. It was like, if you're, if you've seen a Tarantino film and you're, good with intense violence and intense language this will be a walk in the park <laughs> this will be a fun roller coaster ride for well, you you know um yeah you know i i i know you talked about it jay on on one of your shows it was a there was a a christmas special when they actually was it was it chris isn't the carol christmas carol something they redid one of the songs or and he can't find the other version of it i mean is that like I guess we go down the road where would you want to see a movie edited because it doesn't, you know, the movie's okay, but there are certain things that don't stand the test of time, like, or, you know, are not appropriate today. Or do you say, Hey, that's part of arts. It was that time in, in, in history. I mean, I guess, um, what, what's your take, what's your take on that? Do you, should it, should it be edited on some of the bad stuff or I think, cause I've covered a lot of art and artists, um, Quentin Tarantino is an uncompromising artist. How, you know, doesn't he have some seven hour <laughs> version of once upon a time in Hollywood? I'm, I'm exaggerating, but you know, it, it's expression. And if that's how he expresses that, then I think that's valid. And I also think that art brings people together and that's the power is it connects people and it creates conversations. So that way we don't, the three of us aren't sitting here laughing going, eh, you know, like we're discussing it and we're trying to figure out how we feel about it and how we can do better, know better. And, you know, we can't change the film. The film's been made. We could at least, you know, acknowledge it and, and try to do better in the future or trying to figure out, okay, <laughs> what are other ways we can insult someone before we die? <laughs> so I do still think it holds up. Plus, it has a song that is magical that hopefully people can learn that You're So Cool is one of the best, most emotional songs on the planet and uh, that Hans Zimmer has ever created. And Elvis is everywhere. He remains this massive pop culture figure <laughs> who can mentor people and help them build their confidence. You know, it's, it's, uh, that, that also has staying power in my world. But if he, you know, if you're in the bathroom and he tells you to kill somebody, don't do it. <laughs> what what was that song that that was taken out oh, that Chris um, can't find oh, now? That they okay, so it's the, the version Muppets of Christmas that Carol, and it was uh, the love is you know found or whatever. Like the oh, love is gone uh, when um, yeah, she's basically uh, Belle is complaining about you know, how uh, Scrooge is not there for her anymore, and that got edited out, uh, and they only have the 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 same type of song at the end uh where it's found but like it's never gone in the first place like you know so like they cut it out and he was pissed because it's like why they took it away so um on the you know to uh, i didn't know you were who you were talking to because we can't see who you're pointing at or looking at so when you said hey um so when you had mentioned that i had basically said no they shouldn't take anything out of a movie like that that might be offensive like that um if they're going to continue to play it and put it out there um, because it's like denying it was there in the first place, you know, like, so like, don't take, don't take that offensive scene away. Um, just because we're offended. If you're going to take it away, take the whole film. <laughs> Not that we want you to, but you know what I mean? It changes. The, yeah. It, it's yeah. It changes the full work. Right. Something's and missing. It's, like I said, it's like denial. Like it's like saying, no, it's, it, you know, it didn't, it wasn't there. It's like, yes, it was, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so, 
I want to thank you for uh, joining us uh, for one. Uh, so actually, if you want to uh, also remind the audience how to get a hold of you or, you know what I mean, or how to uh, look, uh, look you up and listen to you. Aren't you very uh, kind? Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Sandy Max, M-A-X-X. I'm pretty easy to find, sandymax.com. Um, I work at Milwaukee PBS and 96.5 WKLH in Milwaukee. Um, I'm at Sandy Max on Twitter, on Instagram, and you can find me on Facebook. Uh, if you want to talk music or movies or art, you can find me on social media. And uh, I'd be awesome. delighted uh, to connect more about music, movies, and art. And I will. Uh, I'll also put those on the uh, dis in the the description of the podcast. Uh, we're also cool. on YouTube, so like it's like a combo. I will. I'll put. I'll paste those in there so people can click on them as well. I love your vinyl video, by the way. I love that. That's oh, cool. thank you. Yeah, I, love, I love the vinyl video. Yeah, yeah, awesome. You got to check out her vinyl video. That's really cool. Yeah. You can oh, put that the in way, the notes. Yeah. yeah, I am a music junkie. Yeah, you'll be entertained by my <laughs> uh, random assortment of beloved vinyl. Listen, it's been awesome, and um, we really uh, had a blast today. I, I hope you uh, had fun as well. What a pleasure. Don't be strangers now that we've all met. I got to think that if we talk even more, we'd have more radio friends in common. And, oh, and as you went. Yeah, it was absolutely it was so much fun. So um, real quick, if uh, you want to get a hold of us, it's um, filmcrickets8099 at gmail.com. And we are also on Twitter and um, Facebook. And also, uh, if you are listening on audio, we are now on YouTube. So uh, you can check that out as well. Uh, so uh, it's, we, we'd love to have you and um, so that'll be it take care bye rock on